Hey Wampus! In this tutorial I'm going to make you a little more familiar with the workflow of Wamp and how to work with primitives. This is especially important for those of you who come into 3D as a beginner or from a more traditional 3D software. Since Wamp doesn't have polygons, we don't really deform shapes. Wamp runs with a volumetric sign distance field workflow, short SDF. It's built so we combine primitives by blending them together or subtracting from each other to create more complex looking shapes all in real time. This allows for a more beginner friendly, more accessible, but also more artistic workflow. There's no complicated menus or renders necessary that interrupt you from creating. So let's dive in and have a look on how this works. Now, if we have a look at our top bar, the first menu is the objects menu where we find our primitives. We have three basic primitives, the sphere, cylinder and cube. When you learn the art fundamentals in drawing, you learn to break down everything into those three basic shapes. This is how we can make it easier for us and the same can be applied to 3D, except that we have even more options in the way we can combine them. An extra primitive that we've just added recently is the curves. They are really powerful and you can create almost any shape out of just them. I've made a full dedicated tutorial for curves, but in this tutorial we'll be mainly focusing on those three. So if we click on one of the primitives, it will be added to our scene and also appear in the scene list at the left. Here we can see all of our primitives and unions that are in our scene in a layering system. And now that we have it, we can simply drag it around or we can scale it how we want it to be. Now, if we want to get out another primitive, we can obviously go back to the objects menu and get out another one. But since we talk about workflow in this tutorial, I highly recommend you guys to do instead, just copy the primitive by pressing Ctrl C, Ctrl V. Now we can drag it out there. Now we have the same primitive Another way in which we can copy shapes even faster is pressing or holding Alt and then dragging it out there. So yeah, super fast. And now we can just simply scale our primitives how we want them to be. For example, we can scale this higher, make it smaller. We can make the middle one bigger, but thinner. And just like that, we can create more complex shapes. But all the really important options to edit our shapes we usually find in the Objects Properties menu. And that we can open by simply clicking on a primitive and now the Objects Properties menu is opened at the right. Here the first option that we see is that we can exchange our primitive with one another. And that is the exact reason why we don't want to go back to the Objects menu to get out a new one. Instead we want to copy it because we keep the same position and then we can simply exchange the primitive with one another so we can keep working on where we are. Another option that we have here is to change the behavior from positive to negative. If we have a negative sphere now we can subtract from the other primitives. What's really important to understand about this is that if you look at the scene list in the left now indicates that this sphere is a negative object that's subtracting from the ones above. And it will only subtract from the ones above, so if we, if we simply drag it above the other ones, it won't subtract from it anymore. This is how the layering system works. And then another really amazing option that we have here is the goop strength. This is pretty much our blending amount. How, how much is the negative sphere blending, subtracting from the others? The same way we can check it out in the positive mode. How much do we blend our shape with the other ones? And just like that you can see how you can create a lot more complex looking shapes just by that already and to know how to blend primitives together. And then if we simply copy that one and make it another one, maybe make it a bit bigger there, a bit tiny on the top. And now we, we turn up the blend amount with this a lot. And now it kind of almost looks like an egg a little bit, 
So just like that, you see how simply you can change like a few values in the menu and blend things together, subtract from each other. And just like that, you can create such really interesting, complex looking shapes. And then it really just comes down to being creative with the shapes. How do you blend shapes together? How do you subtract them from each other to create that certain look or that form and shape that you want to achieve? This is the creative part about this workflow, but it's also the fun part, which is also very artistic and experimental. For example, you may have realized as well that we don't have a cone in our primitives, which might be the next most important one that we will surely be adding in the future as well. But so far, how can we achieve the form of a cone? We can simply do that by having a curve. And here, when we have one point, the, the lower point that is very, very big. And then the upper point is a very, very thin point. Just like that, it already gets the shape of a cone. And if we then subtract that with the cube, we pretty much make that cut so we have a cone primitive. That's how you can get creative with what you have. And then another amazing option that we have that I want to show you here is in the properties menu, if we have a cube or a cylinder, we can round it up. And that's a really nice option that allows for some more shapes. Here, for example, we can round up this face of uh, like maybe it looks like a robot or a TV or something like that. So we can round that up, we can group it together, and that creates all kinds of new looking shapes again. Here's another quick example of my character Mushi and how I simply I use the shapes to create him, blend them together. Here we have a sphere, and then here we have a rounded cylinder which makes most of the body and it's just blending with the others to create that shape. And then here we have a rounded cylinder that's subtracting between the legs to give to give them that rounded shape a little bit. Same I did for the arms. And just like that, you can create appealing looking shapes, really fun to play around with. And yeah, that's it for this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you have any more questions, feel free to hit us up on Discord. We are always happy to help.